It's been an interesting journey of 60 years. But whatever direction a head of state takes actually has a great influence on the creative economy of that epoch. The president, Jomo Kenyatta, was known to be a big consumer of entertainment. And his brand of entertainment that he liked to consume was traditional dances. In the evenings, he would invite traditional troops to come and entertain him. Um, the era of President Moy will be defined as the golden era of the choir. So you will find that every single agency in the government had a choir, the best mascot or icon to show how glorified the choirs were, was the Mungano Choir. Mungano Choir was a massive, beautiful chorale. While the choirs were growing, there was a very big suppression that was happening to other uh, forms and genres of entertainment. The literal arts, the authors, are not publishing as much because the stage performances were really frowned upon. But towards the end of the Moi era, theater and art became like a protest. It became agitation. I remember how shocked people were when a cartoonist in the name of Paul Kelemba, Mado, caricatured the president from behind. And the only thing that you would use to identify that this is the president, he was holding the rungu. So everybody knew it was Nyayo. But even the boldest of the boldest could not draw Moi straight on the face because um, at that time, the name of the president would only be spoken in hushed tones. And it is around this time that the notion was put in the mind of young Kenyans that you can never live out of performance. You cannot live out of the arts.